fanny packs, flannel shirts, Thigh Master and Suzanne Summers, Golden Eye on the Nintendo 64, Magic Guy posters, Grunge bands, Tom Bodet, and what that? What do they all have in common with Hugo Hugo Boss, the 1990s? It's not the den behind me. That's why I brought up Tom Bodet. In 1986, he became the spokesman for Motel 6. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that we have a winter wonderland back in our home. And so we have es escaped it where we had no power to a town about 50 miles north of our house called Albany. And the reason why we came here is because literally every single hotel, motel in the Eugene Springfield area are completely booked. I'll save most of it for the B-roll. I'll show you guys photos at the end of it if you're interested of what our backyard looks like. If you didn't see that on Instagram and whatnot, it is Monday night, January 16th. On Saturday, early Saturday, we had a freezing rainstorm come into town and that ended up knocking out power, knocking down tree limbs. In some places, we had two inches of freezing rain fall. And uh, so yeah, just made a total mess. I'll leave it at that other than to say real quick, if you don't know what freezing rain is, freezing rain is rain. And up above in the sky, it's warm enough for rain. So it's not snow, it's not hail, it's rain. It's warmer up above than it is down below. The rain falls where it is colder. And the very second that it hits a surface, it instantly freezes. And so it's freezing rain, it falls. Once it hits, it freezes. Probably the most dangerous weather system we can have here in the Pacific Northwest. I'll take snow any day when it comes to, you know, going out in it. The destructive power of freezing rain is just incredible. I'll, I'll put one photo right here and you gotta wait for the rest if you wanna see the rest. That is a blade of grass with what, probably an inch and a half, bigger than my thumb, an inch and a half of freezing rain around it so it's just literally a blade of grass and then an inch of rain on it and it just gets so heavy i just finished applying the ice tube that is the pre-shave from phoenix artists and accoutrements doing my full review of double sob from phoenix artists and accoutrements i'll be matching using the matching splash with that it is a clone an exact clone in the doppelganger series of Hugo, Hugo Boss. So Hugo Boss by Hugo. There's a bunch of flankers that have been made in and around this, this fragrance, spin-offs, if you will. I'm not gonna go into those, but I'll put photos here and then we'll talk about it a little bit more as we go along. I've already scooped using my Tobin scoop behind me. The whispers are coming from my beautiful wife and daughter and Luna. They're kicking back, enjoying the warmth. When we left our house, including yesterday, which was Sunday, it had gotten so cold in the house that you could actually see your breath. Earlier today, we ran out of even cell power. So, you know, we went from no electricity, and of course, no Wi-Fi and no heat because we have electric heat to then today, just blah, 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 right? You don't want to hear about that. You're here to hear about double SOB. So let's talk about double SOB. I got that scooped into the lather lid Dollar for dollar, one of the best lids. I'll talk about that more maybe some other time. I've talked about it before. I'm whipping that up with one of my favorite synthetic brushes, and that is the Astraeus. This is also from Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements. I have paid for everything in this video other than the soap and splash. The soap and splash were both sent to me for review from Doug and Fran. Thank you again, Douglas and Francis. I've had this for a couple of months now, and I've been meaning to do my review. I have used it a bunch of times. I did not do a first impressions. The reason why I didn't do a first impressions is because it had already been released when Doug sent it to me. I forget all the reasons why it didn't get sent out prior to it being released. I know, I remember right, like the watcher dropped at the same time and then the holidays were coming and Doug and Fran were just slammed and, and super busy and whatnot. And of course, the uh, 
advent calendar was coming out at the same time too. And so I wanted to do my review of this at the end of November. But not only did we have the holidays coming up, if you follow my content and recall, that was also about the time that we lost our 12 year old Husky. And so it just get it got pushed off at that point and then the holidays came and then so now here we are in the middle of january so i want to say thank you douglas and fran i know you probably haven't noticed or you've forgotten but if you see this thank you and i do apologize for the delay i absolutely love this fragrance for those keeping track at school keeping track at home emily and my wife both love this fragrance as much as I do. Emily has given it a nine and my wife gives it an eight. So on the Emily scale, that's like a 20 for Toby. <sighs> so damn good. The top notes, Fuji, apple, mint, lavender, citrus, and basil. You see I've already just a couple of seconds is all it takes with this lather lid. It whips up a lather faster than any bowl in my den. Let's get to applying this. In the middle, we have sage, geranium, carnation, and jasmine. The base, oh brother, I love the base. I love the whole fragrance. Bassam, woody, fir, that's one note. He has bassam, woody, fir, cedar, and patchouli. Look at that lather already. We're going to get this whipped into the uh, pre-shave here, and it's really going to explode on me. The last two nights, it was Saturday night and Sunday night. Almost always, I'm a daily shaver. Um, I've been using lanterns for light. We have the uh, electrical type lanterns that we've been using in the house. And uh, cold water, and like I said... You can see your breath, so it's very much like an outdoor shave, but with piss poor light. But I managed. It was still a damn fine shave. But I tell you what, right now, even though this lighting isn't quite ideal, it's so much better than what I've been dealing with. The label. So check this out. The label, right? I'll put a photo up right up here as I talk about it. Those colors are the colors of the box. If you were to buy Hugo Boss from Hugo, those are the colors that are represented on the box. The double SOB is Boss backwards. So you take the B O S and then double. So you have two S's, put that second S on the back of it, and you have Boss. The photo kind of looks like a cranky 60 year old Lee Hazley. So there's Lee Hazley in the future. But that's not Lee. It's actually supposed to be like a, a cranky boss, right? And it almost looks like Hugo Boss. I'll talk about that a little bit here in a, in a minute. He did have a receding hairline. But it also reminds me of like some cartoon character. This fragrance is absolutely beautiful. I've never owned Hugo Boss. But it's hard to have been a teenager in the 90s and not be familiar with it. I actually had the chance to spray a sample of it a few weeks back. And from my limited personal experience with it, like all the doppelgangers, it's perfect. I'm going to be mowing this down with a first use strangelet. One of my favorite razors, the Ascension Select. I have it tightened all the way. These are adjustable. So I'll tighten it just until it's snug and then back about an eighth and then back about another eighth for about a quarter of a turn. So usually just about something like that. And I'll leave it almost always right about there for all three passes. This is an aromatic green fragrance. I've heard some people say that I got a mirror right behind you guys, as you can probably imagine. And I'm still looking at the um, phone screen. I heard some people say this is like for more younger people. And again, growing up in the 90s, I don't I, I don't agree with that. I think if you're you know in your teens or in your 20s, you can absolutely wear this. Um, I think a great testimony personally of that is that Emily rates it so high. Um, that's our teenage daughter that gives it a nine. So right there, that tells me that 
it's not. She doesn't like the more classic fragrances, the, the musks, the fragrances that, you know, a lot of young people would consider to be, to be for, you know, older guys. I think this fragrance has definitely withstood the test of time and still holds up today and that there's no reason why if you're a guy in his late forties like me or a guy who's in his early twenties can't wear this. This is still a modern and just as relevant fragrance today as it was in the nineties. Without a doubt in my mind, it is uplifting that Fuji apple and the mint is very fresh and invigorating right out of the gates. The lavender and the basil in the top, I really don't pick it out a whole lot for me. The apple, the mint, and the citrus in the top really stand out. I get hints of the basil and the I think maybe the lavender, but what I really have noticed hints of on the back of my right hand right here, and I've worn it a lot over the last couple of months. Um, as you can see, not only I've been shaving with it, I've been using it a lot on the back of my hands. So I pick up more of the the basil then I do the lavender sometimes I, I think I'm actually picking out the lavender but if I am it's very very faint and hard to actually pick it out on its own it's extremely well blended well crafted fragrance if you're familiar with Hugo Boss once again Doug and Fran have taken that classic fragrance and elevated it and they've elevated it in such a way that I believe in my personal opinion they have taken once again the same recipe, but rather than using cheap, cheap or cheaper ingredients, they're using, of course, top of the line hydrosols, oils, the whole kit and caboodle as to wear anymore with these mainstream fragrances that you buy at the department store. It's just, you know, cheap stuff. And so this has a very premium fragrance to it not synthetic and that's kind of what i noticed a few weeks ago when i tried the hugo boss was that it had that synthetic cheaper feel to it so once again they have done that they have taken a classic fragrance and elevated it as we move into the middle for me the whole middle kind of peeks through once you come down out of that top i get hints of the sage the 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 geranium, the carnation, the jasmine. This is not by any means a floral fragrance. I would not classify this as a floral fragrance at all. Hey, Emily, did you pick up any sense of floral? Does this smell floral? No. No? So Emily doesn't think it smells floral either. Uh, that was rehearsed. I paid her 20 bucks to say that, just to agree with me. It's not very easy to get her to agree with me all the time, but when she does, I usually have to pay her. I didn't think so either. So you don't, you don't think it's floral? No. No. So I get just it's like it's just, they just peek through the, the entire middle. You know, I love Sage. If you follow the channel, absolutely love Sage. <sighs> Has on the back of my hand now for maybe half an hour, <sighs> maybe longer. <sighs> absolutely beautiful. However, once we move down into the base, the pine from the, the balsam, the woody fir and the cedar, right? I get this pininess from the very beginning that I didn't mention a second ago. In the top, you kind of get hints of pine right at the beginning. And as you move down through it, that uplifting, invigorating floor fragrance remains. But then this piney, woody depth comes into it. And it just really carries the day. The patchouli, I never really see it standing out on its own. One of the things I think uh, the patchouli is doing in this, and if you guys smell patchouli in the notes and you're familiar with either uh, the original fragrance or, or with this, I don't pick up the patchouli. I think it's acting more as a fixative. And by that, I mean it just, it's making the fragrance last longer. Look at that lather. It was just gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Hope that camera's picking it up in this lighting. Beautiful. Love CK6. This is without a doubt a crowd pleaser though, and you can wear it anywhere and everywhere from work to church to 
out on a Friday night with whoever and wherever. I really think that if you're a guy that's my age, this is a fragrance that you need in your den. And if you're a young guy in your 20s, this is, this is another one that I would recommend that everyone at the very least try or just buy. I absolutely love it. Emily loves it. And the wife, it's hard to get anything higher than a seven out of her. And so an eight is a big deal. Um, five would be, I like it. Zero would be, I hate it. And 10 would be, I absolutely love it. And so far, only 10 I've gotten out of them was um, Sterling's Friends to the End Baccarat Rouge 540. So an eight and a nine to me is basically, they love it. So I've heard a few people say, right, because this is side note, right, sidebar, ready to go on a sidebar. Hugo Boss, if you guys are familiar with the clothing line, line right, like a lot of people, I've, I've been talking with a few different people about this fragrance. And I got into a conversation with one fellow about how he, he really likes Hugo Boss, but he doesn't like the history of the company. And for those of you who know what I'm talking about, I'll just leave it at that. It goes back to World War II. And like I pointed out to him, one, that was almost 100 years ago, and those people are no longer running the company. But I asked him, and I'll pose the same question to you guys now. Have you ever owned anything from Kawasaki, Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi, Honda? See, they had Kawasaki, Honda, I wrote it down so I had them all. Kawasaki, Honda, Toyota, Datsun, and Mitsubishi. So Honda, they made engines for aircraft and for uh, all kinds of things for the um, Imperial Navy. Toyota made trucks. Datsun was, Datsun is now Nissan. They changed the name like in the 90s. Let me pause it real quick and hold that thought. I'm going to rinse. Kawasaki, Honda, Toyota, Datsun, a.k.a. Nissan, and Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi, for example, uh, made military vehicles and torpedoes, and they even made the uh, engine for the Zero. All these companies, though, were involved in World War II. And I don't know. I just, I think... Judging a company for who they were or what they, you know, represented a hundred years ago. It's kind of weak. I got myself. You guys see that? Um, I'm sorry. Weak, weak might not be the, the... Weak was a poor choice of words. Misguided or... I like misguided. Just because, one, like I said, it was a hundred years ago. And then, which who, who of us haven't supported one of those companies that I just mentioned? Um... The fact of the matter is, you know, the people who were making those weapons of war or supporting that war are no longer here today. And I don't want to be judged for the sins of my grandfather or my great grandfather. And ultimately, that's what it would come down to. My mom was born in 45. So that means it was more likely, you know, my grandfather and great grandfather's generation that would have been, you know, a part of it. And so I don't know. I just wanted to throw that in there real quick because I know there's some people that when they hear the name Hugo Boss, they might want to get on a high horse or something like that. Again, that might not be piss poor words. That's just the way I feel. So I'm, I'm not at all worried about Hugo Boss. So please leave that out of the comments because the dude's dead and he's been dead for a long time. Um, and yeah, I'm going to pause it real quick. Let this show you guys the bot sit for a second. And then I'll apply my splash. The splash. And there's just for me, there's people that will tell you that I'm a great guy. And then there's a handful of people that you'll run into that I've crossed paths with during my lifetime that might not tell you that I'm a great guy. And at the end of the day, though, I just don't care what Hugo Boss's past or future was like. And at the end of the day, I don't care what Honda was doing a hundred years ago when I go shopping for a car, I wanted to, you know, 
meet my needs. I want it to be a certain way. And uh, I can tell you this, I, I know for a fact that the histories of, you know, Chevy and the American automakers, they all have their downsides. None of them are too big to fail. I want to thank you again, Doug, for sending this out to me for to review. It really is the little big things. And for me, Hugo Boss's past is a little thing. And I'm not worried about that kind of little thing. I'm worried about focusing on the little things. Like right now, I'm in a hotel where I have electricity, warm running water. My wife and daughter and Luna are all here with me safe and sound. We were able to make the drive up here without any incident. There's tons of ice on the roads um, getting up here and getting out of town. And uh, those are the kind of things I focus on. And this fragrance, I don't even believe, no, it wasn't even made by Hugo Boss. It just has his name on it. And I freaking love it. It is a banger. If you've ever experienced Hugo Boss and you liked it, you're gonna like this or love it. And if you haven't, guys, at least get a sample of it while it's available. Damn fine shave. I have used this blade and razor combination before and not gotten myself. Um, so that's totally on me. And it's probably just the lighting and talking. But as you can see, that weeper has now closed. It was a pretty good bleeder a minute ago. Hope to see you guys again soon. Hopefully from the outdoors, we have more freezing rain coming. And uh, hopefully that's the end of it. And then we can get on to just rain. The non-freezing kind of rain. You guys take care. And I'll see you next time.